So when we are going to the virtual box, when we install virtual box, so if the virtual box is stopped, right, you will see here the options. So if you if you see here the remove only means it will remove from the virtual box setting here. Okay. It will not delete your actual uh, disk file. Okay. But we we'll want to delete everything. So delete all file. And then, then once your virtual box, you have to reinstall it. Okay. So go to the virtual box. So here, um, so you have to create a new machine here. Click on the new. Okay. And then you have to select you give the Ubuntu my virtual machine name. Okay. So I say Ubuntu VM, any name you can give. So this, this already selected, right? Because this is, so just clean this folder also, because this is a by default folder is taking, right? Virtual box VM. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything is there. So it will not allow to create again. Otherwise you can make it one here also. Okay. So it will create a new folder. Then select your ISO image. Second thing is, Keep it your ISO image in some drive, not in the download because download is a risky, right? Suppose sometimes you have removed something. So download like your complete virtual machine will be gone. Okay. So create in the software, go to C drive software and keep it your virtual machine here like this, like I kept it. Okay. Keep it here. Okay. Virtual machine. And then you give the path of your ISO, select your path of ISO. Okay. And this is by default selected. Okay. So this is all by default selected like uh, this all options. Okay. Ubuntu Linux and go next. And here, this is mostly people, they think, okay, whatever default username, password, they keep it. Don't keep it. this. Just keep it your name here. Okay. So you can be always remember your username and password. You keep it simple, right? Like Hadoop I kept. So just keep it this. And then next option is provide the RAM and disk, right? So RAM is a very crucial because depend on the how much RAM in your machine, right? My machine is a 64 GB RAM, right? So in 64 GB, I can give up to 50 GB. Okay. Okay. But depend, right? If you have 16 GB, try it out, give 10 GB. If you have 8 GB, give around 5, 6 GB. Like this, you keep it a ratio, right? So that 75% you can give to virtual machine. And this will be used only when you are using, when you are using virtual machine, otherwise your entire RAM will be used for the windows. Okay. So that we don't need to worry about, right? Okay. I'm using like, like a six GB or five GB for my out of eight GB. So it will be a problem. Okay. And CPUs, like how many CPUs you can max allocate, you can allocate that next, you have to choose the disk. And the one more thing you remember here in the disk. Like try it out, give it max as max possible, like 75 minimum I'm saying, but if you can try 100 or 150, that is good. Okay. But 75 GB disk size you give, and this disk size is taken from the, your hard disk. Okay. So, so sometimes the problem is like, I don't have much disk, right? So I cannot go. So try it out, uh, uh, like as max X you give in the beginning. Why I'm saying is if you later, you try to make more uh, space and want to increase the disk space, it will not be possible. It will be difficult. It will be possible. It will be more difficult, right? So better in the beginning itself, you can give as much as possible because we are doing a lot of installations, right? All the Hadoop component, Spark, Airflow, everything we will install in local. So when we are going to install local, so your local should at least 100 or 75 should be there, okay? So you choose here the disk space. And once you choose here, disk space, like suppose I'm giving 75. Okay. And I'm using a desktop because uh, CPU desktop, I believe, right. CPU desktop is a uh, much efficient, like for in terms of RAM and uh, like uh, we can get the more uh, disk space, right. So I'm using CPU. Okay. So you can take it separate CPU for your, this uh, work purpose. Okay. That will be good. Next, this is the final thing, right. Everything you can review once. Okay. Everything you have given properly and then finish it. Once you finish it, then your VM will come here. Okay. And then you have to just start. So when you start it, it will be doing installation. It will be, it will be doing complete installation of Ubuntu on your virtual box. So this is the process. Okay. So once you've done this, then you will get the Ubuntu like desktop. Okay. So this is my Ubuntu desktop. I'm logging in this Ubuntu desktop. Okay. 
So now I'm going to tell from the scratch, right? Once you have set up your virtual box, okay? So you have set up the virtual box first. Okay, I will have already all links are there. I will share the document. So in this, uh, yeah. So once this is a virtual box download link, after that Ubuntu you download, this is a Ubuntu ISO image. Okay, download this Ubuntu ISO. Okay, see setup is a important because it's a one-time installation, right? If you have successfully done the installation, then nothing, the problem will you will face. You will easily install everything in Ubuntu. Like all the things you can install, but, but your virtual box will be installed properly with the Ubuntu. This is the ISO image, you can download the image. This is a 20 old version. Just uh, we go to Ubuntu desktop ISO 23.04. So latest you can take it. So you can go to this 2322. Any specific reason we are going with the desktop? Why can't we go with server? Desktop means uh, CPU desktop, right? Like they are you can get a uh, good RAM, right? Because if you are going to purchase laptop, so same configuration laptop is costly, right? So desktop only disadvantage, you cannot take it to anywhere else, right? So that's the only drawback, but uh, you will get the benefit in terms of cost, uh, right? Because you will get uh, uh, very less cost. You will get the good RAM and uh, uh, CPUs, everything you will get it. No, no, no. What I'm asking is version, Ubuntu version, you are selecting the desktop. What do they mean? So generally, we'll always go with servers. Huh? No, no, That's desktop is fine, right? Because we have single machine, right? Why we need not, no need server, right? Okay. So okay. This Ubuntu desktop ISO image. Okay. Okay. So 23 or 20, I think 23 version, I will, I will give the link. Okay. So once you download this ISO file, you keep it ISO file in your uh, like software folder and same process which I told you, you log in in the, so first is a virtual box you install. Okay, after that Ubuntu. Okay, next thing what you can do, next thing like you can install the Chrome. Okay, so you want to install Chrome. So install Chrome like there is a one Debian file you have to download and then you have to, because uh, they have given the Firefox but Firefox is slow, okay? So you can download and install Chrome. Another thing is comes like how to share the data, right? Suppose something I want to copy from Windows machine. I want to copy this link and want to copy paste, right? Sometimes I'm going to copy paste things. So there is a bi-directional option is there in the virtual box, many people know. So I'm just telling again, this general advanced here, you can make it bi-directional. So that will make it your communication bi-directional, you can copy paste, you can do. Another one is shared option is there. How to create a shared directory? Shared directory is like, if I want to, if I go if I go to my C drive, some folder is there, Ubuntu shared. And if I copy here any document, it will be appear over there, okay? So how to do this? Like you will go to the setting and here you have the option share folder. Okay, share folder, do the plus icon and just select the path, which folder you want to make it share folder. So go to the directory, C drive is shared. Okay, suppose I'm going to see share this one. And this one, you keep it the name, something you want to create in the Ubuntu, because this, if you are giving here, my folder name shared one. So this shared one will be pointing to this location in Windows, okay? So first thing is we have to make it this one we have to create. Another things what I need to do in the, I have to create a, that folder, sh like shared one folder I have to create and I have to run this command. So these two command I have to run. So this I have created in my user home directory. So first I'm going to create my shared one directory so that I can make it enable. 
Okay, so I'm going to create my here shared one. Okay, next command I will be making it my. There is my my directory name in the uh, virtual box is a shared one, right? So shared one. I'm saying here shared one is in my Ubuntu. So when I this is asking. okay, what is the name I given there? Shared. Shared one. Shared one directory is created here. Not if I check here, shared one is created. After that, why it is saying shared one? This is pointing to. Okay, shared one is pointing to my directory. Shared directory is there. This directory, same same files are coming over here. This is the same. Okay, but it should create. Maybe it is using the same directory. Okay, so you can any directory in the local windows you can share and there you can share the file so these files will be appear over there so once you done the chrome plus uh, you can share directory and bidirectional you can uh, you can do those changes after that like hadoop installation you have to do so hadoop installation we have to we have to use the like hadoop First component is we are installing Hadoop. Okay. So Hadoop, we will cover what we will covering with the Hadoop. We will cover with the Hadoop all the Hadoop command. Okay. Hadoop commands will cover right all the commands of the developer command. So mostly these command we use for the like practice, right? Or we are just doing manipulation of the data, right? Uh, copying the file, removing file. So all these commands are the developer command. Some commands are the admin command. So mostly we are not dealing with those admin commands. So these are related to uh, cluster related command, the health check of the cluster. Okay. But we can learn those commands. Those are some uh, common commands uh, generally uh, uh, developer can use. Like, but if you have already your installed your own machine as a single node machine, so you can use some admin commands you can use. Okay. And next thing in the Hadoop, we can use MapReduce also. Okay. So MapReduce, we can use uh, just program as well as we can write a uh, Python code also. So Java program, we can write uh, to understand the map reduce architecture. What is a map function? What is a reduce function? What is a shuffle and sort? So map reduce, why it is important? Because when we go for other Hadoop ecosystem component, right? Hive, Scoop, right? HBase. So all are generating internally map reduce. So map reduce is an architecture. It's uh, like paradigm, right? It's a uh, um, like a framework, right? Which is providing a parallel distribution, okay? Parallel distributed computing. So when your data is parallel distributed computing, right? Like your data is distributed on the multiple machines and running parallelly and uh, map operation and one is a reduce operation. So I will come on the map reduce. I will explain that. So once your Hadoop component, right? Hadoop is installed means you will have two things to do like Hadoop command and map reduce. And after that, when we installing the Hive, so Hive will is a SQL data warehouse tool. So all Hive related commands, right? SQL queries, like we can do partitioning, bucketing, we can do surveys, UDF, and uh, we can do the Hive integration with the other ecosystem component, like Hive HBase integration, Hive with the scoop integration, right? So all those integrations we can do. So it's a SQL query data warehouse tool. So SQL data warehouse tool, it's uh, same like any data warehouse tool if you heard about redshift in aws and uh, other uh, clouds also providing like bigquery is provided by G gcp okay and next is the uh, hbase 
HBase is a NoSQL database, so we will install HBase. So HBase is a NoSQL database, which is providing the capability of uh, like uh, schema less, right? Uh, because if we say SQL DB is the, uh, the main problem is, it is a strict schema, but HBase is providing a, a schema less, right? Because on runtime schema can be defined, okay? Schema less and runtime schema can be defined, runtime schema. And another one advantage of the HBase is the portability, right? Multiple machines like uh, shared data is possible because it's having a horizontal scalability. So horizontal scalability is there. So if I compare with the SQL database, so SQL databases are vertical scalable, right? But HBase is providing horizontal. So you can find the other NoSQL databases. We will learn Mongo, MongoDB, and Cassandra. Okay, so these are the two other NoSQL databases. And all the this NoSQL databases are following the CAP theorem. Okay. So consistency, availability, and partition tolerance. So this is like in the SQL, we have acid. Everybody knows about the asset like atomicity, consistency, isolation, durability. So the any NoSQL data will follow the at least two properties of the cap. So this HBase we will learn. And the last one of the Hadoop component is Flume. So Flume is nowadays nobody using, but it's just for learning like basic understanding, like someone is asking like uh, how the Flume uh, is used, right, for the ingestion of the data. So scoop and flume, these are the two ingestion tool. Okay. And uh, flume is for unstructured data, unstructured data and semi-structured data. Okay. So when we talk about, right, uh, my data is uh, streaming data, right? My data is coming from, my data is coming from the Twitter or some websites. Okay. So how can I get the data? So flume is uh, providing the architecture for, uh, handling the data of unstructured and semi-structured, like uh, different file system data, right? CSV file, JSON file, XML file. So this kind of file system data is semi-structured data. Okay, so Flume is having the three component. One is a source, channel, and sync, okay? The source is the data is coming from the origin, some location, right, data is coming. It could be a file system, it could be a, uh, SQL DB, or it can be anything, okay? Even Flume can also support structured data as well, okay? But mostly we use for structured data, we use Scoop, okay? So Scoop is a tool used for the structured data, right? If I want to read the data from RDMS, so ingest data, so ingest data from data from RDMS, and to Hadoop, you can or you can bring the data in Hive, or you can bring the data in HBase. So there are many other different, different options are there. So RDMS data is a, like a structured data, the data which is having the dimension, okay? I will talk about these fundamentals because I'm just talking about what are the component I'm going to install, okay? All component we don't need to install today. I will be showing Hadoop MapReduce, like Hadoop only we have to install, okay? And Hive we can install also, but the other components are, like little bit uh, like a more less time consuming right so it will be installed when we are going to start the other component okay so scoop flume hbase hive hadoop and MapReduce. so these are the six component which we will be using in hadoop so it's still hadoop is in market right because hadoop is like storage not only uh like a processing hadoop is used for the storage plus map reduce both okay processing also so it's still if you see any cloud, right, if you go to any cloud, right, AWS is cloud is providing EMR. So EMR is nothing but your Hadoop Spark cluster. Whatever setup you are doing in manually on your Ubuntu virtual box, the entire setup. So entire setup, entire setup you are doing, like you are, you are getting a ready-made setup in the EMR. You don't need to even install any single thing, right? but it's a paid, right? Why we are not going for EMR directly? Because we know like if we can save the cost, right? And we are local setup we are doing and this setup we can do practice, right? But when we are going to learn cloud, then definitely we will learn EMR also. Like we will set up the EMR, Glue, Lambda, Kinesis, DynamoDB, RDS, SQS, SNS, EventBridge. There are around 20 to 30 services are there. So I'm saying for data engineering, Hardly we use six, seven services, but the other services we should know because the 
we need to do integrations like we have to use in in other services we have to use for our data and engineering services like suppose i'm using glue so s3 i need to use i need to use rds i need to use redshift i need to use um like uh, any other like emr so all services are integrated with each other right we can use api gateway api gateway is a rest api integration right like i can trigger my lambda so all those things will come and uh, dominant i am doing in the cloud is aws the other cloud i am go going to do also azure is there and gcp is there also but those will be 30% okay so i am saying like whoever is looking for more aws so uh, it is good for here okay if you think really you want to go for only azure okay because azure i am covering 30% to 40% but mostly is azure is a azure services like data factory data breaks okay like azure event hub so project based uh, services like i will be doing where you can implement the hands on project there you can utilize the different services together in a one single poc okay so aws i will cover services so we will come to cloud then we will see that okay so aws azure gcp and the last is the devops okay so devops is uh, we have to learn because uh, complete aws or if i say um, the automations right if infrastructure development things we have to do with the containers so we know right uh, ci cd pipelines automations we have to do so we should know these basic tools right git jenkins docker kubernetes okay this is not very very in depth but yeah we will do like we can set up our infrastructure of the data engineering setup infrastructure we can do like i have to set up my like hadoop spark kafka airflow nifi and uh, uh, mongo cassandra so this all we will do whatever setup we done in the ubuntu we can do on the containers so now question comes like why we are putting so much effort in the installing manually on ubuntu because this containers can be set up within a <laughs> five minute okay so whatever you do four five hours right it will be doing in the five minute okay but we are going step by step why we are learning installations because installation is on its own place right and if we get the installation having a knowledge right so we can do troubleshooting right sometimes we can easily debug our issue in installation and uh, configuration so we can easily do but containers we will learn against everything through the containers okay so containers we don't need to put our own effort because we create a some compose yml file and docker compose yml file you keep the configuration of these all services your cluster will be ready in 5 minute okay this all so containers is having its own importance because why we need a containers because now mostly projects are moving to the containers microservices if you heard about everybody is talking about the microservices providing the high availability reliability security so there are so many advantages are there so we have to learn the microservices architecture right so there we will understand how exactly we can utilize our skill sets in the docker kubernetes and uh, kubernetes is having the ham chart that is uh, advanced things in the kubernetes ham chart and the argo cd okay so i will be covering the ham chart and argo cd okay so that you can uh, understand like more like kubernetes having little uh, if i say like manual right the work is more right you have to create a manifest file if you can overcome by the ham chart you can overcome okay and uh, argo cd is for the deployment right like you want uh, like uh, whenever code is committed in the github so your auto code deployment happen so that you can do with the argo cd okay so let's see first i'm going to show hadoop i have already hadoop installed on my system but i will show you from the scratch like what are the steps okay so i will delete uh, my already hadoop directory and then i will show to you <clears throat> okay so first thing is um this is my already hadoop installed hadoop 3.3.6 okay so i am removing this and uh, in the home directory actually there are the two folders are created one is a dfs data and one is a temp data so these two folder also we don't need to use okay so we have to delete this okay so now first of all 
how to start uh, how to start to install Hadoop. So you find uh, I have already every steps in my document. You can follow that because in the website steps, like we have to skip one step. Okay. So if you come here, this all I have explained it, and there is a Chrome installation. You can go for wget command to download it and install it. Okay. All are very pretty straightforward. The first thing is you have to do sudo apt update. This Hadoop installation will take 10 minutes. If you do properly, if you have missed anything, you cannot config, you cannot find the issues uh, or troubleshoot, maybe not two or three hours. Okay. So if you do properly follow the step line by line, then you will be you will be able to do the setup within a 10 minutes. Okay. So first thing is we are here going to do sudo apt update. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So first thing you have to, and one more thing is one, once you enter in the Ubuntu, right? So you will get a one issue. I know uh, that issue is like, you will not have the sudo or access. So what problem you will get, you will be not able to run any command. You can't run any command because you have to add your user as a sudo or, okay. So what you need to do, you have to type vi sudo. Okay. I'm telling you here, vi sudo. So when you do vi sudo, okay. So I have to go to the root first, sudo su. Okay. I come here and I type it here, vi sudo. Once you type vi sudo, you come down. This is the first step you have to do. Without this, you can't proceed even single statement, okay? So you have to add whoever user you created, right? So you add this user here and add exactly the same thing repeat here. Okay. If you can see, okay. Just same per permissions you give for the root because you are trying to make your user as a root. That's a purpose. Okay. Just control X, you come out. Okay. And exit. Once you exit after that, you can run any command. Okay. So this is the first step you have to do. I have already mentioned it here. Okay. And then you do further things. Okay. <clears throat> so once you do sudo apt update, you install JDK. Okay. So you have to run the JDK installation command because mine is already installed. So it is quickly installed, right? It is just overridden. Okay. So if I check my Java version, so I can find my Java version is 1.8. Okay. So this is the second step. Next is. I have to install open SSH server and client. Okay. So this is for making password less like a SSH connection for that. We do this open SSH server client and you can follow these steps. You can see these steps you want to see. You can see in the Google install Ubuntu virtual box. Okay. So here you go Phoenix nap website there. You can see. this one. If you click on this website, so I have copied everything from here. So even if you follow here, like I, no, no, this is install virtual box on Ubuntu. Oh, okay. Okay. My bad. Right. Actually what I'm typing, I'm typing the wrong, right? Anybody is not looking at and nobody's telling installing Hadoop on Ubuntu, right? We are doing this, right? So when we do this, so we have to follow the Phoenix nap one, this one install. This, uh, Phoenix nap. Yeah. So here, like this step I did, sudo apt update, JDK I installed. Okay. And then next is the open SSS server client. You can detail uh, explanation you can see here. So once this is done, okay, this step is done. 
then after then after you you don't need to do this step so this step you you should not do this add user you don't need to do any user to add you directly do everything in your own user okay so next step we have to do ssh key gen okay so we have to just this key gen this is uh, because mine case is already uh, already key key this is a like a public private key kind of thing like uh, generally we are connecting one machine to another machine so we have to create a ssh key gen so we should know about this command right because this command not only just we are installing our machine sometimes we have to install in our remote machines also right so how can we connect uh, if you know in the github right when you want to uh, commit your code so you have to two options are there either you can use your uh, your uh, token you have to use as a password or second option is you can create a key gen so if you create a key gen in your local so it will create a one public key and private key and that you can connect to your github okay so that i will show in the github but i am telling you this ssh key gen we use and this whatever the key gen we do this keys we will public keys we will copy it into the authorized key for file so one authorized key file is there in the ssh file uh, folder so there we will copy this keys and then we will give the 600 permission so this 600 permission ch mode we are giving once we give this ch mode permission then we will test it ssh local host so once we test ssh local host so i am getting here my ssh local host is connected okay so till here it's fine everything next is we are going to install the hadoop so one more thing i'll tell you here right i already mentioned like one guy mentioned that 3.3.6 version you should not try you should not try this 3.3.6 fold version because this version has issues regarding the configuration okay so better to you type it hadoop 3.3.4 version okay this version you can say download okay so you go to the download 3.3.4 <clears throat> you go and here is the release hadoop this download the tar file you click on this download this tar file <clears throat> and once you download this 3.3.4 then you can extract this 3.3.4 version and then you keep it in the your home directory so first thing what you need to do already i am doing in my steps if you see my step i am just telling here the software so i have created a one software folder in uh, like there is hadoop 3.3.4 folder i will create so this folder i will copy it but i will create a one softwares folder so i will keep it my my user directory there is a softwares and there i will copy this hadoop 3.3.4 so you have to here are software and here i will copy my hadoop 3.3.4 okay so once my this uh, download i go and check okay it is downloaded so i extract this one <clears throat> so just once completed then only you copy otherwise you will not be able to copy completely okay so now it's completed. So I will copy in the software folder. Okay, so next step, what I need to do, once 
this one i have to change the bash rc because bash rc i have to add uh, this properties so this property you can find in the website also here in the website also but there you have to correction so you can use uh, whatever i provided otherwise you have to if you copy from here because you have to change the username so this all steps we have done this we have completed so next is uh, you will be you will be taking this part okay but here is uh, you have to change your username and uh, software and here is a equal sign so better to take it the configuration part from here okay and copy it because my software folder hadoop 3.3.4 so i can just change it in the bash rc so in my if i go to nano and bash rc always open in the home directory if you try in any other directory you will get an empty file because bash rc is available it's a hidden file okay so you open nano dot bshrc and uh, here you go at the end okay so mine is already installed 3.3.6 so i am going to change the version 3.3.4 so this is all the Hadoop. Uh, Arvin, so one question. What is the issue with the 3.3.6? Because I have downloaded it. Yeah, yeah. I did not face not. any issue. But maybe like, okay. So mine is also 3.3, .3, but uh, somebody like many people got the yarn home problem. Okay, yarn home. So yarn home, like uh, when you are even your, uh, like uh, everything is correct, right? You have set all the Hadoop home path. Everything you set it, right? Even yarn home mm -hmm. is so yarn home and uh, map reduce home everything you are pointing to the hadoop home and hadoop home is your home directory of hadoop right okay yes. but it is not able to find the yarn home it will be giving you the error yarn yarn home is not found okay so actually a lot of research i did for that uh, solving that issue for that particular because even i worked on 3.3.6 it worked fine okay but this is maybe some other configuration problem right maybe uh that but but that problem was there okay so okay but if we don't have any uh, problem then it's then okay right? because i already yeah 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 so i'm saying like see uh like if you first you in first attempt you are able to run hadoop commands without any problem you are able to start your hadoop cluster you are able to like you will find the issue in the when you are doing the sdfs name node minus format there you will get the issue Okay, from there the issue will start. If you don't get the issue there and you are successfully format your name node, after that you are able to start your Hadoop cluster, start hyphen all dot sh, then it's fine. Then you are uh, not, you don't have any problem. Okay, but don't know right okay. because even I found two person the same issue for three point three point six, and when I change the version for those people, it worked fine. Okay, so maybe it's a new release, right? So sometimes uh, it is. Like uh, even I didn't get the problem because I installed before. Okay. 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 Sure. Let me also check uh, by yeah, yeah. running the name node commands. Mm. No name node command will work right. It will come problem. It will come in the beginning only when you format the name node because name node format time it will ask you. It will say yarn home not found. That error. Okay. Your error will be like this. Yarn home not found. Even your Hadoop path everything is set yarn home not found okay so this command coming environment variable like this see it is saying some bug okay let's see that which version they are saying in hadoop installation we say installation 3.3.6 okay Okay, maybe it is not reported by someone, but uh, okay, check that command is uh, like if your name not format fine and then you are not getting any yarn home not found. So it means it's good because something like in the one, some shell script is there. Okay, so I think yarn config. Okay, okay, try that, install it, and uh, if you don't have any issue, then it's fine. Okay, so I have. Yeah, I, I did not face any issue. I I even downloaded the other uh, component, Hive scoop. No, no, not Hive. First initial Hadoop itself, it will give the issue. If yeah, it... yeah, no, it did not give me. Okay, fine. 
So I change the version. So control X, shift Y, enter. And uh, we have to apply the source command. Don't forget the source command. Otherwise, nothing will be applied. OK, so source command we did. And now next, we have to configure the configuration properties. So in the configuration properties, you go to etc Hadoop. And here we have to first Hadoop env.sh. So in Hadoop env.sh, we have to copy Java home. So Java home is already we have installed Java. So this Java home we have to copy. So we have to copy <clears throat> anywhere you can copy. Okay, but here is a, so Java home you copy it here, save it. And next file is a foresight.xml. This is a file which is having common configuration for Hadoop. So Hadoop is having one is a, uh, SDFS site.xml, one is a mapred site.xml, yarn site.xml, and core site.xml. Core site.xml, they have made a common file for common configuration for Hadoop and MapReduce both. That common configuration comes here. If, it is, is, if, if configuration is specific to the Hadoop file system, SDFS site.xml is there. If configuration is related to something mapred site, MapReduce related, so mapred site.xml. If configuration is related to yarn, so yarn site.xml. Okay. So we have to copy paste here our configuration. So this one, I have to just exactly the copy paste. So I already deleted the temp data, right? Some directory because I already created. So you it will automatically create it. But make sure here, here is your username. Okay. So you should not follow my in one. Okay. This is just for indication for you. You have to change your username and save this file. Next file is the SDFS site.xml. So SDFS site.xml, again, you have to copy paste here the configuration. So you will be copying from the here SDFS site.xml. And here also you have to change two places. So you have to change two places. Like one is a, a data directory. One is a DFS data.dir. So you are saying name node directory and data node. So name node and data node, I will talk about this. Name node is a master and data node is a slave and which is containing actual data. And name node is containing the metadata. So it's a, like a MongoDB is a master slave architecture or Hadoop is a master slave architecture. So there is a master is coordinating the slaves data nodes. Okay. And here one more property is their replication. What is this replication means like data is replicated. Data is replicated on the multiple machine, the same data. What is the advantage? Like high availability, right? Whenever data is uh, one machine is down. So another machine having data node machine having your same data. So I will talk about that. Like there is a block is called. So block is basically 128 MB is the default size in Hadoop 2.x and 3.x. And uh, before Hadoop 2.x, uh, the block size is a 64 MB. So why this block size is too large? The reason is because Hadoop is much faster for the large amount of data analytics. Okay, so when we are processing the data, which is very, very huge data, like petabyte, jettabyte, or megabyte, GB data, right? So how can you process so fast because of this design? The design is the block size is larger. If block size is larger, it will be taking a less number of blocks to uh, search your data in the disk, right? But Hadoop file system is a tree-based file system. It's like a file system, normal Windows file system, or but Windows file system or Unix file system have the six KB block. It's very, very pretty small block size. But if you compare with the Hadoop block size, that is 128, but it can be configurable. It can be go up to 256 or 512 uh, MB also block size. So, but, but if somebody, someone thinks, okay, if this block size is too large, if my file is just only KBs, so what will happen about the other part of the block? So it will be occupied by the other file. Who will be taking care of this part? Like name node is taking care of this part, like metadata. So name node is containing only metadata, only metadata, which is data about data node. And this metadata has all the information about the data nodes data. So whenever you are interacting with the Hadoop and saying that I want to copy a file in Hadoop file system, or I want to read a file from the Hadoop file system. So name node will be taking care of that. Okay, so we don't need to worry about that, like where my data is going, where from where the data is coming. I don't need to worry about that. 
I have to just simply run my command and I will read the data and I will write the data. Okay. So this is a SDFS site.xml and the next file is a mapred site.xml. Two more files are there. So this is a mapred site.xml. So mapred site.xml is a mapreduce site.xml. So MapReduce is now becoming uh, outdated because people are not using because it's a completely Java code and it is using 200 lines of code to write a very simple program in the word count. But it's still the MapReduce concept we need to understand because the MapReduce is used not only in the Hadoop Big Data. If you go in Mongo, there is a MapReduce is there. MapReduce means key value pair. So key value pair is basically a key is associated with value and you can contain your entire data as a value. So whenever you, you know, right, Java is having the hash map, you know, right in the dictionary is in uh, Python, every programming language, every framework support everywhere, the MapReduce kind of framework is there. I'm not saying exactly MapReduce is there, but MapReduce is following completely key value based like the like distribution, right? The data is transferred over the network because in Hadoop, the data is transferred over the network in a very, very huge amount of data. So how this data is maintained, right? Over the system, like serialization should be there, right? Serialization and deserialization. If anybody knows in Java, Python, so there are the serialization, deserialization things happen. So Hadoop is having its own data type. So they have the text data type is there and uh, int writable, double writable, float die writable data type is there. When I will show the MapReduce program, then you will understand. So this is, I put it wrong one because this is not a yarn site.xml. This is, okay, this is a MapReduce framework yarn. Okay, this property is good. So next is the last property that is a yarn site.xml. Yarn site.xml, it is uh, the newer version of Hadoop 2.x and 3.x is using the yarn based framework. So Yarn is yet another resource negotiator, okay? So Yarn is uh, basically providing the high availability. It has a lot of change from the previous Hadoop 1.x version. So 2.x version onward, we have the Yarn. So Yarn is like basically providing high availability through the standby name node, okay? There is in Hadoop, there is a secondary name node, but now they are giving more high availability option by using the Yarn. Okay, this uh, standby name node. Okay, so our all configuration is done. We are completed. Now, next thing is we have to format our name node. So how to format our name node? SDFS name node minus format command. So it is, it is my Hadoop is already running with the other version. Okay, so see my, this service is all there. So I have to stop all.sh. Okay, that is the reason my this 3.3.6 folder is automatically coming again and again. Okay, because I have deleted 3.3.6, but it still logs is creating my, it's still like uh, <laughs> I have removed the complete body, but <laughs> it's still it's uh, like a logs is still generating. So I am stopping my older version 3.3.6. Okay, so now I will remove completely this. Okay, so so when I'm trying to name node to format, so what issue came, right? It's saying already you have Hadoop. Why you are running Hadoop, right? So services were running. Now I have formatted my name node. I will do start hyphen all dot. Firstly, check here any error came or not. Okay, because that is very important because if any error came in your SDFS name node format command, so your Hadoop will not start. Okay, so I don't find any command. So I don't find any error. So I will start my start all.sh. So start.sh is basically starting your, uh, there, there are two types of services are there. One is storage service and computing service. A storage service is a name node, data node, and secondary name node. And computing service is the resource manager and node manager. So resource manager, node manager. So total five services are there. If you install, if you start with start all.sh, all five will start. If you do start dfs.sh, only storage will start. If you do start hyphen yarn.sh, only um, processing service will start, okay? So we can do. And now after that, we can check the JPS. So JPS is Java processing service. I will identify, verify my all five services are coming. So if I check here, name node, data node, secondary name node, and all these are coming. If I 
if I check my Hadoop file system and Hadoop file system is a virtual system. You, you cannot go inside the Hadoop file system. You cannot go. It's a virtual file system. So whenever you are running a Hadoop file system command, you have to use Hadoop FS. And then you say some Linux command you have to say, suppose I want to list the file system. List means like you want to see the entire root directory. So when I say Hadoop FS minus LS slash, so right now nothing is there because this is a warning message. If I say this is a new file system created for you. So there will be initially nothing is there. So I will be creating a some directory. I say Hadoop FS minus MKDIR. So I want to create a some test directory. I say slash. So why we are using this slash? Slash is a root, right? And even if I don't give the slash, if I do ls only, so that is a base directory. Two directories are there. So both, I mean, right now nothing is there. Suppose I create uh, some MKDIR. If I say only test I'm doing. So this one is creating in the base. What is the problem? Like my MKDIR is not doing. Hadoop FS minus LS. Okay, let's do in the root MKDIR testing. I think it's a problem. Okay, here is doing testing. So this directory, if I check Hadoop FS minus LS, and then I do slash. So when I do slash, I will find the root directory the testing is created. So testing just now I created directory. This is an empty directory. So if you see the symbol here, D, D for directory, and these are the permission like user permission, group permission, and other permission, right? So these are all, all permissions are there. Okay, so these permissions are defining like what level of access is there for this directory. So we'll see that like how to set this permission. There is a ch mode command is there and Hadoop also having the ch. So whatever command you want to do on the Hadoop directories, you have to do Hadoop FS. If I do simple ls, I will see the local file system. The difference is local file system, just ls. And if you want to see Hadoop file system, you have to give complete path of your command. Like, okay, suppose I want to see in the testing directory, the files, but there is nothing is there. So I can copy some file from my local. I say Hadoop FS minus, okay, suppose I create a some local file here, cat, I say test1.txt and I'm just writing some content, okay, and control D. After that, I want to copy this file in my Hadoop file system. Hey, Salute, there is a Tagultin. Okay. So when I say Hadoop FS minus put and I say test1.txt, so this test1.txt, I want to copy in my Hadoop file system in testing directory. So I will say testing. Okay. I have to give complete path. So when I say this one, I put command I have to use because I didn't use any command. So Hadoop FS minus put. So there is a one more command is there copy from local or put command. Both are same. So you can give your local file system path and Hadoop file system path. So source path and target path. When you do this, your file is copied. This is very basic or simple command I'm telling, right? This is really, really, very basic. Okay. I have to tell around 30 to 40 command is there. 30 command is there. Okay. So you have to start from the basics only. Then you can go for the more advanced command. So Hadoop FS minus, suppose I want to check this file in my Hadoop file system. So cat command testing slash test one. Okay. So now I can see the content of my file in my Hadoop file system, I can see the content of the file. So that is like test.txt. I can I can do the directory name. Okay. But only thing is you have to give always the complete path. Whether you are giving a file path or you are giving a directory path, you have to give a complete path. Suppose I want to create a multiple directory in Hadoop file system. Like I want to create like this test one. Then inside test one, I want to test it like this anybody has the linux knowledge can tell me hyphen p we have to give it hmm. yeah we cannot uh, say it like this hyphen p 
hyphen p okay yeah so this is not related to hadoop this just uh, the clause is given in the linux okay so minus p will create a nested directory so in a one single command you can create other option is like you go one directory go like like that you can do okay so you you can create multiple directories. suppose i have a some file in my local i say two file is there test and test one i want to copy i want to merge these two file and create a one single file okay so okay you want to see all the command how to find hadoop fs you put you will see the all list of command these are the maximum command you can try okay like hat command is there ls command suppose you want to see the help of some command so this is a hadoop fs yes, help and you say my, i want to see ls command help just type ls so ls command related all the options you will get it okay okay so suppose i say one one use i show you um put command okay so let's see we go for put command put command or copy from local so can, can you see minus f option okay now we will do one experiment like hadoop fs minus put i did okay if i do this one again what will happen will it uh, override it or what it will do it will show file already existed yes so we are trying like the same file again so definitely it will say so this is the option you can try minus f so minus f means forcefully you want to say please override my file so it will override your file it will not give any alert message it will not give any error message okay so many options are the minus D is there. I haven't tried all those options, but you can try with the help you can find. Another option is there, Hadoop uses command is there. Hadoop fs minus uses. So uses command and you say like put command. So it will be telling the options things. It is not giving you more details, but it will be telling you the, the options it will be telling you, okay? I have a two files in my local file system. I want to merge those two files and want to copy into the Hadoop. Okay. So if you remember the command is append to file. So append to file and it's a case sensitive. Always uh, remember it. The first word is a small first camel case. You can say T capital F capital. And then I have a two file in my local test.txt, test1.txt. Okay. And I want to copy into my testing directory with the name test2.txt okay you can give more than one file also more than two file also you can give but the last one should be the hadoop path because it is going to copy the concatenation of the data in the test2.txt <clears throat> so now i want to see hadoop fs minus ls cat command i want to check the content okay so i will see test2 dot txt okay so i will see the content of both the files okay so this is the like uh, the reverse of this command is called merge file suppose i say i want have i have already in my hadoop file system two files and i want to um, bring to the local okay so hadoop fs okay first i want to check how many files are there testing so two files I have already, okay, test one, test two, okay. So I want to use it, Hadoop FS minus get merge and merge is all is small, get merge, everything is small. And then you say here, a complete path you have to say because Hadoop cannot recognize the, like a short path, you have to give complete path, test one dot txt. The next one is a testing slash test two dot txt, okay. Now next I, I say what file I want to copy in my local. So test3.txt. So test3.txt will be created in your local. So I can say cat test3.txt. Okay. So this way you can do the concatenation merging you can do. One command is there. If you see the list of command Hadoop FS. Okay truncate command truncate command is modifying your existing file in hadoop file system suppose your hadoop file system file you want to truncate some specific number of character 
okay so if you have file <clears throat> some test1.txt so hadoop fs minus truncate and uh, i say i want only four length okay and i say the file name so be careful if you run this command your content will be uh, changed right so you cannot get back okay. testing slash test1.txt fs minus cat testing slash test one dot txt so there are many useful command is there h e double l l l coming okay so we have uh, uh, like deleting files commands also there copy and move okay suppose i want to copy the file from one hadoop file system hadoop to hadoop directory so one copy paste we are doing, copy and move we are doing from the local to Hadoop, Hadoop to local. Hadoop to local you want to do, you can do Hadoop FS minus get command. And uh, there is another one, copy to local. Copy from local and copy to local. Okay, so that's a reverse, right? Copy from local is local to Hadoop and copy to local is from Hadoop to local. So if I say from Hadoop to local, there is another command is there, get command. So get command you can use simply right testing dot testing slash test one dot txt and this file you want to bring locally. So suppose you have this file is uh, you want you can directly use dot command dot you just use or if you don't give anything that is also fine or you can give the name of the file. Okay, so if I don't give anything, but if this test one dot txt is already there, right? I want this test1.txt to be overwritten. So what option I will use here? Minus F, okay? This minus F option is common for everyone. Like even put command, copy from local, copy to local, get command, and I will show you CP command also, okay? So this one will be overwrite your local file system file. But suppose you want to copy the file from Hadoop to Hadoop, okay? I have a one more Hadoop directory I'm creating, mkdir testing to okay so this directory is uh, another directory i created and this directory i want to copy a file from testing slash testing slash test dot test one dot txt i want to copy in testing two so what is cp means cp is here for copying from the hadoop to hadoop and there is another command is mb command okay so always uh, keep a difference between the, like a local to Hadoop, Hadoop to local and uh, Hadoop to Hadoop, okay? So when you do the CP, your this test1.txt is copied, okay? Same minus one F options you can use here also. If you try second time, you will get the error. So you can use the minus F, okay? So this minus F option you can use and you can override the file. But minus MB command you do cut paste there it is not available. Okay, so that is not there. Okay, so you can use the minus MB command also that is cut paste not copy. Okay. So Hadoop FS. So there are the some command like set replication. This is very important command. You know right replication factor. I set it in the configuration file one. Right, you remember one I set it. But now I want to change the replication factor of particular file in my Hadoop file system three. So three replication factor is basically three replicas, three block copies in three different machines. Because one machine, there is no use of keeping the three copy, right? If one machine is down, the entire cluster is down. So this is for the multi-node cluster, but I'm showing you how can we use the setrep command to change the replication factor. So command line, you are changing the set replication factor. So Hadoop FS minus set rep. Now you say, I want to replication factor three. I want to change for the particular file testing slash test one dot txt. So if you have seen before test one dot txt, you found it, the replication factor comes 
one like this it will come like this one is coming right it is coming one right okay now i'm going to make it three so when i do this after that i will see my replication factor is changed to three right okay so why why we are doing this suppose i say my entire file system replication factor is one by default it's three in multi-node cluster but if I say I want to increase my replication factor five or seven or nine or 11, right? Depending on the criticalness of my file. Some files are very critical. Some documents are very critical, right? I don't want to lose it, right? Because if suppose, if sometimes uh, my two machines down, three machines are down, right? So it's still my high availability will be more. So replication factor, sometimes we change manually through command line. And that is very advantage, right? Like, okay, particular file we can change. But entire system you change means like for all the files, it will be applied, but that I don't want, right? Okay. So this is the set replication factor command. Okay. Like suppose you want to remove any file or there is a RM command is there, remove file RM. Okay. Suppose you want to remove some empty directory. Okay. So RMDIR command is there, Hadoop FS. Suppose I created testing file. Okay. I want to delete this directory. So Hadoop FS minus <clears throat> RMDIR and I say testing file. So it will delete empty directories only. But suppose I say I have a directories file, everything is there, a lot of things are there and you want to delete each and everything, you know, recursive things. So minus R options are there, right? In the Linux, so uh, it's a it's a Linux option only. So RMR we will use to delete directory files, directory inside the directory, okay? So suppose I have a multiple directories, Hadoop FS minus MKDIR, I create testing five, okay? And inside this, I create another directory, testing six. So, now I'm copying some file Hadoop FS minus <coughs> put test.txt. I copy in the testing file. And one more time I'm copying in the test, testing six. So now my testing five is also not empty. My testing six is not empty. I want to remove Okay, should we try with the testing five now with the RMDIR, what it says? Okay, because we should check all the options, okay? So sometimes now somebody asking you why RMDIR is not working here, okay? So the reason we should know, we should know the reason, right? Like we should find the exact reason why it is not deleting because saying directory is not empty. So in this case, what you do, just remove DIR and put it RMR. So RMR will be deleting your directory. Okay. So can you see this directory is a state forward deleted because it is not the backup, right? It is not going to the trash. So Hadoop file system also having one trash. Okay. And that trash is local to Hadoop file system. Like on the Hadoop file system itself is a one trash. What is the advantage of keeping that trash? Like suppose you by mistake, you deleted file and you want to recover file. So you can go to the trash location and you can find, but that trash is not by default enabled. You have to configure in the core site.xml, you have to add an entry, then after you will enable. Okay. So generally the trash directory folder will be created in the user directory. So if I check Hadoop FS minus LS, so my user directory and my, my username directory here, one trash directory will be created. So whenever you are uh, creating the, you are configuring trash. So this automatically, this entire directory path will be created. And whenever you are deleting the files, it will go there. Okay. Okay. I will, I will give that property. So how to, how to configure trash, how to configure trash. This is the direct command. Here is a just keep it this property, property this, and they are saying to put it this property. So 
So this property will keep it your, uh, maintain the trash, okay? So core site dot XML, like uh, this value, this, this property will be defined, but you have to restart your system and then it will be enabled, okay? You have to copy this. But this time interval value you have to give. Okay. So whatever they're saying. If it's zero. Okay, so you have to. So what is the command to stop cluster? Stop all dot sh. So you can restart after this. Uh, so Arvind, uh, one question actually. Mm -hmm. So before starting, uh, you have used one command, right? For format. What yeah, is yeah. the format? Uh, right? Format is basically uh, like, you know, right? Anytime windows or like uh, you use the format, right? So it is, it is entirely new system. Like whatever your, uh, it is taking your directory space. Like you have given Hadoop file system is the same space, your Ubuntu space. Okay. Whatever Ubuntu, but Hadoop file system, what it will do whenever it needs uh, to take the space, it will take your Ubuntu space. Okay. So it keep it initially, it keep it initially like format, uh, that particular, like a uh, space, like some default space that will make it format, right? Format means it will be like, uh, like I, like generally we want to copy files, like entire file system, right? So we do the format command. So that format is just, uh, um, like we can say format is format, right? Format is basically, uh, you okay. are right. So nothing should be there, right? So it should be formatting. So this format will, uh, configure your Hadoop file system particularly. Okay. So when you do name, okay, notes, it is related to to uh, like it makes uh, Hadoop to understand that file system is related to Hadoop. Hadoop and this is uh, particular to Hadoop use, right? That file system. Because if okay. you see in my directory, there is a uh, automatically na name node and data node directories are created. Like one DFS data and DFS data mm -hmm. is like this data node. Like this is all data things now, which whatever data we are talking about now, this all uh, uh, this uh, file system we are doing. Everything is here itself because this is a data node. But, but this is like just one system, right? Like only one machine. So that is the reason we are able to see one data node, right? But actual mm -hmm. practically it will be a different, different machines, right? It will not be a one single machine. So that's a concept of data node. Okay. Yeah. So, so now I stop the all and now I start back again all so that I will be, uh, check the effect of my, this trash because this trash is very important, right? Sometimes, uh, by mistake, I delete it, so it will be deleted. But suppose if I say you have some large file and you don't want to go into the trash because because if you have already configured trash, definitely it will go to the trash only. But but you want to ignore it, so there is a skip trash option is there. Skip trash. So if you use Hadoop FS minus RM skip trash, so it will not go to the trash. It's straightforward, it will delete. But you have to be uh, careful about that, right? This file is no use for me and I can go for the skip trash, okay? So now let's see that uh, some file we will try to delete and check, okay? So, okay, this directory is there or not? Okay, this is already deleted. Okay, so Hadoop FS minus LS testing. Let's do one RM minus R rm command we use to delete one single file rm and same structure it will create if your file is deleted this test one so whatever your testing directory like where this file is there in hadoop file system same folder structure it will create in the trash okay so testing slash so this testing test one dot txt 
can you see there last time it was not coming like this right it is even clearly telling you where this file is going it is telling you right this is going to the trash move to the trash okay move means it is a cut paste right okay so delete here is a soft delete it is like a okay just remove the file from here um, now you will not be able to see the file in hadoop fs minus ls slash testing so you will not see the file here okay because the file is deleted now if you want to see your trash location hadoop fs minus ls so now i want to check my trash location so this is my let me show you the testing so same testing directory is created there so in user my username and my trash there's a dot trash directory and current okay so suppose this trash you want to make it empty like suppose you want to get back the file back okay so there is a hadoop fs minus cp command you will use so you know cp and just take this entire path like user arvin this path you take it because this path your file is there it's like a restore thing so but you have to do manually restore there is no specific command right you can restore on the same location so you have to give same thing testing slash test one dot no need to give the test.txt because it will be taking the file name if you don't if you want to change the file name then you can give your file name otherwise this is the same principle in the linux right you you can copy the file with the name or without same name so now you do testing now your file is get back okay so if you see testing the same file get back okay now if i say i don't want to i i don't want to keep it in the trash i want to delete it directly rm command and skip trash skip t capital trash and then you say the file testing slash test one dot txt so now you will not see that message of moving it will be saying deleted it's the same message you saw that uh, before configuring your trash right so this is the option like you can skip like larger file like sometimes you are not uh, looking for uh, to save your file in your uh, uh, trash right because it was by mistake you delete so you then suppose you want to delete this trash like sometimes i say okay i don't want to keep it more trash right <laughs> i want to make it empty my trash so there is an expunge command so when you do hadoop fs minus expunge okay so these all command are there if you do hadoop fs everything you will get it so now what happened it has whatever your trash directory is like it has created one more directory and keep it in a one directory still it has kept it in one more directory so that you if you have by mistake you done the trash this expunge so you can get your data in this directory so all the separate separate directory it kept it in the one date directory port this is a current date just now the date is created okay so if i see in this directory so you can find in this directory everything is moved here okay it still is a chance like you can get back so can you see the file is there right but once you delete this one rm rmr you do in this then it will be permanently go okay so this is the way like uh, handling the the remove file remove directory commands okay so hadoop fs okay so one more useful command i'll tell you there are so many command hat command is there so hat command and tail command so these are the like opposite command so generally what the meaning of hat like we want to top part of the file or bottom of the part we can use the tail command so if i say hadoop fs minus okay first we understand like here is a little uh, change in the hat command generally in the hat command in the linux like you get the 10 lines it is showing the 10 lines if it is less than 10 lines already so it will come the entire file but if file is more than 10 lines it will be showing the only 10 lines in linux but here is a little change here is it is not a matter of 10 lines here is a matter of 1 kb of your file like 1024 character suppose my 1024 character comes only three lines or five lines or 20 lines okay so it will take first 1024 character okay so suppose if i say hadoop fs minus hat and my file is small that is fine 
So that will come complete file test one dot txt. Okay, but suppose I have a larger file test two dot txt. Okay, so this is less than one zero two four character. Okay, I write uh, some bigger content. Okay, so then I can see. Okay, I have written this all in the file. So Hadoop FS minus <clears throat> port command hello dot txt testing. Now I apply the had command Hadoop FS minus had testing slash hello dot txt. So can you see T R U till here 1024 character? It is more than 10 lines, right? It is more than 10 lines, right? And uh, it is 1024 character is ending here. Okay. So we have to make sure like how much is coming 102. So this is just generally had purpose is to sometimes I don't want to see entire file. I will go with that. Sometimes I say I want to see the last part of the file, like tail command is there. Just you write tail. You write uh, tail and then you will see the bottom 1024. So this is the bottom 1024 character. So this is the same thing applied on the tail also. So this is the bottom 1024 character. Okay. So one thing is sometimes you have seen whenever you are using tail command, you use for the logs, right? When you are uh, checking the logs, we use tail command. So can you tell me the what is the advantage with that? Like what is the purpose of using that way tail command? Anybody has used it? Really? See latest, latest update. Latest log, log, right? So I want to keep it hold my log, okay? And I don't want to like if you use just tail. So you seen that I was able to see in one go whatever content is there, the last part of the file. But I want to keep it hold whenever the new content is coming. So I would keep checking it, okay? So the same thing is here also. Tail minus f you have to use, and uh, you give the file. Testing test two dot txt. So, <clears throat> so if you see here, it is hold. It is not completed. This command is not completed. But you cannot do anything here, right? Because your your this you have to check the further content here. So you uh, you open a new window, and here you do adding the content. Okay. So Hadoop FS minus append to file I use because we can append the content in the existing file. So test.txt. Just make sure you have those files there in the local. Okay. And then I will be giving testing slash test2.txt. So this kind of questions you prepare, right? Like, okay, test to okay so here it's done its part is done because it has done can you see something came here right if i do it again it is keep coming right so this is the way for testing right logs file right in the hadoop file system your logs is keep appending in the file and you want to uh, get it okay so you can come out by control C, you can come out from the, so some permission command also there. Okay. So there are so many commands. So permission commands are the three commands, ch mode, ch on and ch grow. So these are the three command, ch mode, ch on, ch grow. So this command we use to change the permissions. So if I see my Hadoop fs minus ls slash testing, directory so i see here my permission is a read write on the user read on the group and read on the others okay and here is a user is uh, arvind and the group is a super group okay 
now i want to change the this permission first ch mode i want to change so how do fs minus ch mode i give shift plus seven okay nested you can do minus r option okay but we are going now for the one single file okay hello dot txt so it will change the permission so if you want to check in the testing directory so you will see the triple seven so you can know right uh, what or you can give the aux permission also right user group permission plus x minus r plus r so that way also you can use next is uh, like you want to change the honor so there is a ch on command is there so on will change the ch on will change the honor so ch on own and i want to change honor to how to so so you can change the honor you can change the group right these are basic basic commands so hadoop fs so you can change the honor okay you can change the group so this same thing if i am doing for a one single file i can do the recursively i can do for the directory also so whatever is possible for the file the same thing we can do for the directory okay so testing <clears throat> Hadoop FS minus okay, LS testing we have done. So next is uh, if I want to change the group, so CH group is there. So Hadoop FS CH group. Okay. So that command you can try. So <clears throat> Hadoop FS. Touch command is to create a empty file, right? Like sometimes I say I want empty file. Okay. So I can create a touch or touch G you can use to create empty file tail command. We can see one command is a text command is there. Text command is, you know, cat command. You can read the file in the any, any file you can read, but suppose my file is in the GIF folder. Okay. I will give this command. So text command will be giving the file content in the GIF file or some, um, uh, tar file like you have in GIF file. You can, you can see the content. And uh, stat command is giving us just uh, like a time, date and time it will be giving Hadoop FS minus stat command. So you can give testing slash, okay, just testing you can say. So it is just, right. So this is the time like when it is created. So it's a status and uh, set replication we done and uh, set FACL, it is changing the control list like access control list. So this is same like uh, we did uh, CH group, CH mode, CH on, but this is a different way, okay? So this command is there, attribute. The other two command is there, set attribute or uh, F attribute or get attribute. So this command is sometimes you don't want, you don't have any metadata about your file. Suppose one particular file, you want to set some metadata, okay? So you want to set some metadata for your, uh, set f attribute set f attribute like you can set the name and value and then you can set like some description you can keep it like some metadata you can set it and you can use the name and value then you can set the some attribute like suppose i want to keep it some information like somebody can get the same information what i set it so someone can come to know so set f attribute and get attribute can we do Okay, and uh, put and uh, some reason a snapshot command is there. So <clears throat> there is uh, one uh, create a snapshot, delete a snapshot, or rename a snapshot. This is just like a backup of uh, any um, like a like directory backup you want to take it. So a snapshot you can take it. So a snapshot directory you tell and tell the name of the snapshot. So if you want to delete a snapshot, just give the snapshot directory and give the snapshot name. And one command, this is very important command, like you want to know the size of the files and directory inside that. So df minus s command is there. So Hadoop fs minus df minus h. And you can give the directory. You use this command in the Linux also. This is nothing new command, okay? So if you are familiar with the Linux, so find command, Find command is basically you can search any file patterns, right? So you can find the pattern. So Hadoop 
fs minus find command. So we have to give the directory where you want to search. And then I say minus name, I say uh, test. Because I don't know about this location. Okay, so see, I didn't know about the where the test two is there. So I'm giving my root, you find my test two dot directory, or test two dot txt file. So it gave me the file. Even I can give the some pattern type of thing. Suppose I want to find all the txt files. I don't know how many txt file is there in my this uh, root directory. So, Oh, it is not taken like this. Actually, something like we have to do maybe star. We can give star. Yeah. Yes. No, it is not taking. So I think only txt I type it rather than dot txt because it's like a pattern. No. Sometimes I do fs. Okay, find command just we do find the file for a specific extension in Linux, okay. So type minus M, it's giving, okay. In the double code is giving, dot is a slash we are giving minus type, oh, minus type is a F. Okay, let's type this one, type F. So slash will come like where you want to search. Okay, after that. Uh -huh. I think type not required, maybe double quotes. Uh... So minus name, okay, type I remove it. Okay, minus F type, okay, minus name. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so it is understanding pattern, pattern like basically we have to give pattern like wildcard characters, right? So. I think uh, question mark will be fine also. Like suppose uh, one character file only. Like sometimes I say like some a.txt is there. So I want to look for only. So I mean, right now no file is there. But suppose I say I want to find text two. Okay, let's see for test. Something like we have to check. Okay. So do practice Maybe on this comment. Huh? Try to give one more question mark. We have minimum five, I think. Oh, minimum five, but our file is a test two dot txt. Test is oh test is four and test okay. is four. Yeah. Correct, correct. Okay. Actually, I was thinking. Okay. So this wildcard character is question mark is a uh, for one character is a one question mark and star means uh, any number of characters. Okay. So that way you can search. Uh, so this is all the files listing. So find command is very useful command. Okay. Can the grip command anybody try? Hadoop happens. I think grip is not there. Okay. It will not work. See any command is uh, na, if say not found means that means uh, Hadoop is not supporting that command. Okay. If we try. So it will be saying unrecognized command. See, if this one you are getting unknown command, so that means that means the just uh, check the list. If this list is not there, means you can't write. You can't write. Okay. So you have to check the command. So all Linux command is not possible. Like some Linux command are possible, but not all. Okay. So so anyone has question? Anything? Any doubt? Mm. Yeah, one question actually. Mm. So uh, earlier you have set uh, the replication for factor for one of the file to three, right? So if we remove that file, all the three copies will be gone. Or okay, so you are saying replication factor is three. Okay, and uh, see, ideally it should do right because if I am deleting the file because uh, deliberately I am doing right because uh, right remove command you are doing right. Yeah, we didn't check it because this replication factor is maintained by the Hadoop. But we can check it how many replicas are there that we have to check on the cluster, right? So we can open uh, localhost 9870 port. Okay, so local 
whenever you do your file system like a health check you can do 9870 so this one like you will get all the information right uh, live node data node okay so this replication things um, like uh, data node part so how is it is showing like my com complete capacity block so this is uh, file wise replication we can exactly check or not because this is more over admin part but we can should have on the cluster level right so this is like view directories like i can whatever i can do command line i can check here the view right my entire file system i can see but here i cannot view the file but i can download it the download option is there so this is the like useful like when you want to just view purpose you want to do but there are the other uh, like uh, entire cluster information is here okay what is the name node so this is the data node uses histogram and uh, it is showing this is complete use is showing but internally definitely the name node contains that information right how many blocks where the each block information is stored okay all those information but practically if we remove the file we cannot have the option to get back right from the replication mm. but trash we can take it but initially it goes trash might be when you do remove command it will not uh, be remove the replication until you remove from the trash right okay i believe i have to check that one okay okay so you do this practice of the commands okay so next thing is like actually some fundamental concept uh, i have not started yet okay like those uh, big data related uh, basic fundamentals like how many types of data uh, like uh, types of data is there v's like different types of v's what is a uh, so i will cover the ppt things tomorrow okay just in 10 minute because you got the idea of this so tomorrow i will show okay how to set up a java project also like uh, how many ways you can access the hadoop file system so one way we have seen that sdfs command right this is a uh, like you have the hadoop in your local okay suppose i say my hadoop is not my local it's in the some remote machine is there so there is an hadoop is there is a sdfs rest api curl command so you know the curl utilities we need to install the curl by default, the curl is not there in the Linux. So you have to sudo apt get install curl. So curl, if you see, it will not be there. So it is saying apt install curl. Okay. So once the curl is installed, we have to use sudo command. Okay. Because sudo has the permission. So install curl. Now, once curl is installed, you can use the REST APIs. You can hit. We have another way is a postman or other REST client. Uh, we have we can do that also but if you want to see on the terminal right as a command so we can use the rest curl command so i will show this rest api curl command and another one more way is uh, access the hadoop file system remotely that is a java api project so hadoop is written in java right this complete sdfs everything is written in java okay so its native api is java okay so when we write a Java program, so whatever command you are using, like MKDI, uh, CP command, so all these command are internally calling the some Java API method. So you can write your custom code, like you want to make an automation, right? I say, I want to create a hundred directories. Can you do with the single command MKDI? No, but you can use shell script. So same MKDI command, if you write in the loop, right? You write for I in like some range, right? Some loop I write, okay? And then I will do the Hadoop FS minus MKDIR. Then I can write uh, my directory name is DIR plus I, right? Or like either. Okay, so some something like this, I will append dollar $i. Okay, in the Linux, actually, we are not writing Python. So this way, it will create a multiple directory. Okay, and uh, that is a one way. But second way is like through the Java program also we can do. So Java program, we can copy the file, remove the file, like whatever operations we can do, command line terminal, we can use SDFS, Hadoop, FS, Hadoop, Java API program, Hadoop, Java API port. Okay. So for that, you should have, you should have the IntelliJ. So you download the 
Vijay because IntelliJ will be helpful for the any Java or Scala related project. Or if you are going to work on the Python, PySpark, you have to install PyCharm. So two editors are there. One is IntelliJ IDEA. So IntelliJ IDEA. So this IntelliJ IDEA is for, uh, for uh, Java and Scala code. Okay. And uh, PyCharm, both are from the JetBrain. PyCharm is for Python. Okay. And PySpark. Python and PySpark. So these two are editor, you can keep it ready. Okay. But first you need IntelliJ because we have to write some Java code. So we have to, so you can go and the community edition of the, so community edition of IntelliJ download. Okay. So you can download the community edition one, other version. Okay. So here is the option you will get windows one community edition so first you have to download it okay so what you need to do you download this version and once it is downloaded you have to extract it and go to the bin file and run the idea.sh okay i show you it is very simple because it's not like uh, just uh, in the windows like you can uh, click on the icon and then it will start okay so here you have to start the shell script is there in the idea.sh file is there. So just my going to see I have already here in my download. Okay, I have not. So next one more installation we have to do hive. Okay. So I because there are so many things are there. First you do step by step. Hive I will uh, show tomorrow. So first Hadoop things we have to complete. Okay. So Hive installation is also 10 minute installation. Okay. Okay, so this is. Why it's taking so much time? Okay, now it's done. So just we have to where it is. I go to the folder. So here this is idea dot uh, idea folder extract here <clears throat> and uh, copy in the softwares. So I will show you, show you the Maven project, right? Uh, how to create a Maven Java project and we will use the form dependency XML, right? And uh, we can create a Java project to run our, so this folder having already one idea folder, so take it this idea folder, copy this one, keep it in the uh, softwares and go inside this folder bin directory and here you start terminal and write command dot slash dot slash idea dot sh okay so it will start your what is the problem i job or change
Actually, I have to check it like some Java configuration problem. Unsupported version. Okay, my JDK version is a problem. Okay, I will show to you guys tomorrow. Okay, so let's connect tomorrow. Okay, and uh, I will cover uh, this map reduce and uh, this SDFS other thing. Anyone has uh, any question can ask me. Okay. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, I we like I have not installed everything like starting from Ubuntu. I have to install uh, Hadoop over the class. And next class, when I come, everything should be installed. So not everything. With, with... Only I told uh, VirtualBox and uh, I only hi, Hadoop. Only Hadoop. Yeah. Okay, you have. Uh, do, do you where to follow that? Mm, this recording also will come late. Yes. If I... No, no recording. I will give in the okay half an hour because once it converted, right? I will upload it in the same classroom. If you have joined my classroom here. So this is the our new classroom. So I have already shared, otherwise I will give the link again. So this classroom you joined. So here already two recordings already there. If you see okay. here. Oh, recording is fine. Like uh, like which version of Ubuntu, which version of Hadoop? Because what mm -hmm. happens if I follow something else from net uh, again? So everything is mentioned now in document like Ubuntu 23 is fine, 22 fine, anything is fine. Okay, okay where, is the, where can I find that document? This is there itself in the this link I'm giving. Okay, in the chat I'm giving link. So this this group you can join this class. So this class you join, there is a class work. If you go here, if okay. you go to the class work, if you go to here. So if you go to the classwork, you can see the same thing, what I'm able to see here, okay? And- uh, uh, Arun, looks like yeah. you're not sharing your screen. Oh, I have unshare screen, one second. Oh, so just now, no, nah, it's not shared, right? Before that it was shared, right? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay. So this uh, uh, classroom link, so when you like join the classroom, you will see this, like classwork. Okay. okay, right now the this is a document. Okay, like this is an installation document things. Okay. Okay, so completely like this all the you any 22 is fine, 23 fine. It's not a matter for the new or okay. okay. 22 or 23, whatever you get it, you can do that on virtual box seven. After that, you follow only this seven, eight, this is steps, right? And this website link also there. Only thing I told, don't create a user. Hadoop user don't create there. I already showed that, right? Only mm -hmm. that step you don't need to do, but other things you have to follow a step by step. And it is a very clearly I showed in the video also. Okay. okay. So five, 10 minutes it will take because why I'm giving to all of you guys to install yourself. See, if I try install everyone, I will do. But what is the point to learn, right? Okay. The point is like uh, we should find errors and we should fix. Troubleshooting we should do. And if we get any issue, we can ping in the group, right? Everybody will help, right? I'm telling you, like someone who has already installed, they will help, okay? If it's still the issue will not resolve, then you can show me, I will quickly fix, okay? But I want the troubleshooting issues, right? Like why we are installing this Hadoop, all these things, because we want to do our own troubleshooting, right? For yes, 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 agree. Yeah. That's all, yeah, thank you. I, I, will, I will upload recording, okay? Yeah, okay, thanks yeah. everyone. Thank you. Uh, Arvind? Mm -hmm. Hello. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. yeah uh, so, a couple of questions. So, do we need to have like uh, Java and Python knowledge here for this? Like See, Java oh. is not needed because Java we basics like uh, core Java fundamentals. Uh, like uh, when we are going Hive in UDF, right? So there we need to know class concept. See, class interface. These all things like similar type of things in Python also, right? The terminologies are same, right? Like oops concept, right? I say inheritance and polymorphism, right? So it is good to go in one way you learn concept and basic class concept, like how to write a simple Java program, right? That is enough. I'm not saying you need to write a code because nobody's writing nowadays MapReduce code, but at least you can see somebody's code. Like suppose in a project, like somebody asks you, can you see this code and understand and write the Python code? So if you don't know the Java, then how can you write a Python code, right? So 
both the languages understanding is needed i'm not saying writing code is very very efficiently needed in the java but i am saying at least you understand this is a class this is a method this is a function this is a variable right so this this is fine okay so i am not asking like anybody write uh, the full full flash code but python is must because why python is must because we are going to learn pyspark so pyspark without uh, python or uh, python you cannot do right so python understanding if you start reading yourself python first because i will cover python three sessions three to four sessions i will cover but in depth of python knowledge never will come without practice or without uh, challenge coding challenge right you take or accept right some programming things you do so coding always comes with practice it is not a one day right we like just i read the uh, python and i just made a some small two three programs and i will be expert in python python practice you have to do like you take the challenge and then write the code and without uh, uh, looking anywhere else you just keep trying keep trying keep trying so see i know i got difficulty still i feel difficulty in python because i am a java or scala background okay even i want to write a simple program in the python i get difficulty but i'm keep trying because i know already i have a coating of uh, right last 10 15 years i worked in java how can i overcome that part in one day two day or or one two month it is not possible but someone who is completely new for all the things he can learn any language from the scratch it's very quick for him okay it will not be difficult but python is must okay i'm saying python is not only spark but you have to use python for devops python for um, scripting for a lot of purposes there python right python is very very uh, advantage and also scala also right Arvind? we have to learn scala, scala also, right? like um, like we cannot know the the things right like what type of project you may get suppose you are trying pyspark project but but uh, luckily you got the scala project so what you will do in that situation you will leave the project or you will you will you will do hard work to learn scala so that is the reason my impression is like i say always try to uh, like uh, learn one language very very hands on and second one you keep the second priority just understand or basic things so at least some coding things you can do so if you get a chance in future in any one of them you will be efficiently work my project is using scala even last three projects i done scala 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 okay and scala projects why more are there in the industry also because if machine learning is not there in your project definitely they will prefer scala because scala is faster because it's a native because spark is written in scala okay so kafka is written in scala okay so scala why it is getting so popular right uh, because it's a native and it is so faster as compared to python python is slow everyone knows that okay but still we use pyspark the reason is like uh, the machine learning right the python is supporting right so that is the reason uh, people are using machine learning purpose like python pyspark okay that's the main purpose otherwise uh, if i say i want to make it my application more faster reliable okay so scala is a good choice okay so it see if you want to learn scala as well right i will suggest you scala t point java t point scala is there I teach from the Scala. So I will take three, four sessions for Scala also. Okay. So whoever is interested, whatever like you can do, it's up to your choice, right? Whatever you want. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, one help. I mean, I am new to all this Java, Python and Scala also. So mm -hmm. if we can share any resources. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will, so I, will that, do, uh... I will provide the link. So why I want to give you the link in before, right? So you have enough time, right? Because these practice, whatever I'm getting done, this is a one hour practice or two hour practice. But if you have really more time, right? You can invest your more time to learn extra things. So I have already shared my like classroom links, right? You guys follow there, all the my previous classroom links. But still, Scala, Python, or Java related some specific tutorial links I will send you. Not very, very in depth there. But yeah, you can at least uh, like uh, prepare very well. Like W3 school is there. That is good for Scala, Java, and Python. All three are good. And one is a tutorial points. That is for good for all three. And one is a T point for the Scala. Okay. Java T point for Scala. I will, I will, I will give the complete URL links. Okay. In the group. Okay. I will do that. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Yeah. Thank you.